I've been telling my wife for 20 years that this is all going to go to crap someday. <laughs> this is never going to last. We need a backup plan. Um, and, and in March, I thought, you know what? I'm finally right. So there are, according to the American Booksellers Association, it's about one store a week that's closing permanently right now. Uh, so before the pandemic, I was working in Berkeley. Um, I just helped open up a pizzeria called Polara. So things were going really well. And then unfortunately the pandemic kind of started to grow and it was only a matter of time before we had a shutdown operations and, and lockdown in our homes. The studio had to close, right? Um, we can't have any students come inside to the studio. But, um, you know, we're yoga teachers, so uh, we try to stay flexible. We saw that, you know, some people are teaching outdoors. Maybe it's time to start doing that. So we started opening up outdoors in spring. Um, everyone's flexibility is going to be different here. All full. Um, we didn't actually expect them to be completely um, full, and that was amazing. Before shelter in place, I've been wanting to teach outside for the longest time. And then it happened, like what a blessing. I was just standing out here scratching my head one day and I looked down at the sidewalk and my gears started turning and uh, I went inside to Danielle and I told her I wanted to make a basket and drop bread to people and she called me crazy. And uh, sure enough, we threw together a, a little mock system and it worked. And the next day we were safely dropping bread down to people, uh, completely socially distant. It was 100% safe, there were no, no worries at all. So everybody was just excited to kind of get out of the house, and come down to the basket. The kids loved it, you know, dropped cookies down from the sky. So it was a ton of fun. And thanks to Bernal Heights and the people that live here, I mean, Bernal Bakery is what it is today. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have this second version of our basket that a neighbor welded for us. We wouldn't have our sign that was hand painted by a local artist free of charge, you know, our brother-in-law. Um, laser etched that one for us you know just word of mouth and and the business and the friendships you know it, it, it kind of we're fortunate to gain a lot during COVID. It, it was no one thing it was just a hundred little things that we changed to to try to stay open. I can't remember if I had the idea or my wife had an idea of a, a shirt that said stay home read books. So we just took kind of the green apple, we put stay home read books in it. We had a friend who's a graphic designer, she did it for free, it took her about 20 minutes. Um, and we uploaded this art to a website called Bonfire. It was remarkably successful um, and it really, it was real income that really helped us pay, pay our rent, pay our staff, pay our health insurance. It's incredibly buoyed by our staff's willing to, uh, willingness to adapt. They didn't want to sit in front of a computer and process web orders. They want to be with books and people. Um, I'm impressed by our customers' willingness to spend a little extra money to keep us alive. Um, so I think there's a lot of hope. But you, you have to have hope. If you're a small business person, you have to have hope.